So I think the initial feeling coming out of that game, and understandably was, well, you can't blame Mahomes. He was under siege. He did everything he could possibly do. But then I had a conversation on the radio yesterday with Howie Long, and as the day went on, I started to get a sense, and Jeff Saturday pick up this thought. Maybe there were some things he and the Kansas City coaching staff could have done that might have changed the outcome, and they just wouldn't do it. What is it? Yeah, they, they should have changed their game plan at the, in the half. Like, you saw them come out of half, Greeny, and all of a sudden they decide to run the ball, and they're effective runs, right? When you have two high safeties and they're playing two-man a bunch underneath, they are forcing you to, to run the football. And it's like they wouldn't get out of their own way. And let me tell you, from high-producing offenses, I played on them my whole career, 14 years, we led the league or were close to being the top of the league in offense. When you come to the sidelines after kicking field goals, or punts, the pressure you feel, Greeny, as you walk over there, there's no continuity, right? All of a sudden, you start asking, hey, man, were you open? What were you doing? The line's looking at each other. Hey, did you get your guy? Hey, is Patrick throwing the ball on time? Is he getting the ball out? Everybody asks those questions, and Mahomes actually said it in his press conference. I didn't get the ball out on time. I didn't know the routes receivers were going to run. The line didn't do a great job. All of those things could have been solved had they done what the defense was providing them. That's run the football and and then you find rhythm in your offense. You bring that safety down. You make sure they can't stay too high like they did. But I felt like the Chiefs went in and were stubborn with their game plan. And ultimately, that cost them. Because, listen, it, you played into the Buccaneers, into their hands, into their defensive scheme and thought process. Let the front four rush. Let the seven drop back. And then use the team speed to come down and smother them. And, but I'm just telling you, Greeny, like the pressure you put on yourself as an offense that has carried this football team for really two years, and all of a sudden nothing's working and everybody's pointing fingers, it becomes really difficult to dig yourself out of that hole. You know, Marcus, and so it's an interesting thought because we talked all last week. You have to pick your poison with the Chiefs. Pick your poison. And then they just shut them down completely. And the answer, Jeff, is telling us, and I, I want to hear your perspective as a defensive player, is take the check down, run the football, force the Buccaneers to come out of what they were doing. And for whatever reason, the Chiefs never really gave that a try. They never did, G, and it was arrogance. Um, I like what Jeff is talking about. It was just Kansas City Chiefs' arrogance. They thought that this thing would just turn into what normally That's happens right. for them. They would get behind, figure it out, and be able to go bombs away and score touchdowns and win the Super Bowl. But look, I, I love what Jeff said. I'm not getting in the scheme. I know Jeff Saturday is going to love what I'm about to say. The line of scrimmage mattered. And the line of scrimmage, yes. there was a distinct advantage in this football game on both sides. I know we get enamored with the Preach. rush and the pressures on Patrick Mahomes. But when Tampa Bay brought in that extra old lineman and when Grunk was sealing the yep. edges for Leonard Fournette and Ronald Jones to get around them, that's when I knew the Kansas City Chiefs were in trouble. Look, we could talk scheme all we want. If you can't block them and if you can't run it, yes. you're not winning football games. And I feel so stupid because Graz is on here and he took the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And all of my football acumen for years – told my crazy self to sit on that stage and take the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in this football game, knowing what that line of scrimmage looked like. I got enamored with Patrick Mahomes and the passing game and how explosive they are and the things that I had seen the Chiefs do. And I forgot my roots. And I want to personally apologize yes, to sir. Jeff Saturday being another lineman on this show for not following what I know about football. And the bottom line is this. You can put all the track stars you want to put out there. You can put the best quarterback you want to put out there. If you drop a piece of meat in the middle of Lions and it ain't nobody else to protect them, <laughs> that piece of meat going to get yep. eight, bro. And that's what happened to Patrick Mahomes. We that could look at Patrick Mahomes' interview. It looked like he had been hit by a bear after that game. Yeah. And that's exactly that's exactly how he felt, man. And that's reasonable. Again, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, when he ran it, was effective. He only had nine carries in the game, and I get that it turns into a blowout in the second half, but there was plenty of time to try and establish that. Graziano, I know you had a thought. Go ahead. Well, just too many offensive line injuries, right? I mean, Duvernay Tardif opts out at the beginning of the year. They survived that. Mitchell Schwartz gets yep. hurt early in the year. They survived that. Eric Fisher getting hurt in the AFC Championship game was the breaking point. And Swagoo, I did mm -hmm. not think 
the Chiefs are only going to score nine points because that offensive line, I thought it might make the difference in a close game. So I really thought Mahomes would overcome yeah. it as well. But, um, yeah, that, I think that's what, that's what ended up doing it. They just couldn't get into anything because he was running immediately as soon as he got the ball. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.